while since I've done, done a let's discuss video, which is kind of just me chatting about a topic. Today I wanted to talk about hard magic systems and soft magic systems, but I also put up a community tab like a week ago asking what you guys think about hard versus soft magic systems because while I love reading through the comment section after a video, video goes live, I really like to sometimes try to incorporate your comments into videos as much as I can just to make these videos feel more interactive and more like you guys are participating because sometimes you can word things way better than I can. So this is a discussion about hard magic systems and soft magic systems from my perspective, as well as a little bit from your perspective, which will be fun, hopefully. But as we discuss all this, we're going to be operating under the assumption that both are written well. Both hard magic systems and soft magic systems can be written not great and can have holes and can have inconsistencies and can have deus ex machinas and just a bunch of things that are not ideal. So assuming operating under the assumption that, that we're talking about well-written hard and soft magic systems, let's discuss. Starting with hard magic systems. So a hard magic system is a set of rules and laws, consequences and boundaries, borders for the magic in the story, kind of more like science than like traditional fairy tale magic. It's something that we, the readers, get to understand. It's something that we can grasp and something that we can reason through and walk the same pace alongside the characters as they're learning it and figuring it out and using it to get through certain bound or certain uh, obstacles throughout the story. And its laws are firm. The laws of this magic system are not broken, unless they are. And if they are, there's a really good explanation for it. Hard magic systems work really well with clever characters, creative people that can see an obstacle and think of a clever way around it. As well as plot-driven stories where the plot and the magic almost are on the same level of importance. Stories where the plot is at the forefront and so is the magic. That's where hard magic systems thrive. One thing I love to see is when we have a, a good understanding of the magic, and seeds are planted all throughout the story. And and when we, when we face obstacles, it's not a matter of punch harder, uh, will it stronger, yell louder, and then your magic is, is, is better, obviously, because we're talking about well-written magic systems. But what we're talking about here is when all the seeds are planted and the character has to, they see an obstacle and they have to think about What's a unique way to use this magic that still fits within all the laws and boundaries that have been provided for me up front? There's not new information being given at this obstacle. The information is all there. I just have to think of a really creative way to use it. Once you get that level up, that power up, that moment of breakthrough, it, it feels almost like a mystery where all the clues were there and you had all the clues and you could have put it together too. You could have thought through this just like the protagonist did. And maybe sometimes you do figure it out with them, sometimes you don't, but you can always look back and say, it was all there the whole time. My first experience of this was with Mistborn. So Mistborn is actually the book in the series that made me fall in love with fantasy because I love intricately woven plots. I love intentionality. I love getting to the reveals, getting to the twists, getting to the big moment of the story and looking back and saying every word here mattered. Information is dropped in all throughout this book and you have a lot of information in this story. So sometimes it feels like almost, almost like information fatigue where you're left feeling like I can't retain all this. And yet you can retain the amount that you need in order for the reveals to be able to look back and say, oh, it was all there the whole time. But then on reread, when you know what to look for, you can find so many more clues that completely bypassed you the first time around. Like I said, it's almost like reading a mystery novel, but a fantasy that's completely magic focused but you get to solve the problems alongside the character. And I think that's one really great thing 
about hard magic systems is that we, the readers, get to solve problems with the characters. Because we have a grasp of this world and a grasp of the mechanics of the magic just as well as the characters do, it's almost like we're in the story with them and we're participating with everything that's happening on page because we have the knowledge and the ability to sort through problems just as much as the characters do. Sean put it more succinctly, hard magic systems are a lot of fun when they're used almost like a tool or a science. It's fun to see characters come up with creative ways to solve problems with a magic system in a way that we can understand and follow. Another really great thing about magic systems with defined rules and laws and boundaries is how tangible it is. At night, when you're falling asleep and you're imagining yourself as a waterbender or an earthbender and thinking about all the different scenarios that you could face in your day-to-day -day life and use these bending abilities, don't pretend you don't do it. Knowing really specific details, like with water bending, you actually have to have the source near you. So carrying around a water bottle is essential in order to be able to have quick maneuvering attacks. Knowing that fire bending source is the sun, so anytime that source is available, you can use it day or night. You're there, just not during an, ecl an eclipse, but you are more powerful during the day, just like water bending is more powerful during the night because of the moon. All of these things, all these little details that you get sprinkled throughout the story, make that bending feel tangible, make it feel real, make it feel like you can easily insert yourself into any scenario and imagine up a myriad of different ways that if you were a bender, you could use it too. Now, Avatar is an example of something that we're gonna discuss more, which is that it's it's on a spectrum. And I think that it kind of falls in between hard and soft magic systems. It's definitely not the hardest magic system where every single detail is described to you ad nauseum, but there are rules and boundaries. There are consequences. There are all the things that make it hard. But then also in the story, we have face snatchers and literary owls, and those are never explained. What's the magic there? Who knows? It's a spectrum. We're we'll actually, we're going to talk about that more later in the video. Let's move on. Conrad said, I really like both. I really like hard magic systems, having well-defined rules set, but really enjoy seeing how different characters apply them in different ways. Yes, a great example of this is Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter is an example of a hard magic system. From the start, as soon as we start learning about Nen, we have a chart, we have rules, we have boundaries, and it never stops getting expanded on. It never stops getting more complicated and more overwhelming to understand and more and more and more complex. It allows the person to use their own energy or aura to use Nen. There are seven types of Nen users and depending on where you fall on the chart, it means that you have different abilities, different restrictions. You can use other parts of Nen, but to a different degree. It is so complex, but at the same time, it's pretty soft as well. Different characters can use abilities in completely unique ways. You could have two people who are the same Nen type, but they have different specialties and they have different inclinations or different personality types that make them pursue it in a different way. And creativity is a huge aspect of how a person is going to fight and use their ability. So while there are these seven types and there are these boundaries, it's actually completely limitless because the different users will use it in completely unique ways that still fall within the boundaries of it. It's so cool. Really, Nen is both hard and soft magic system systems used together, which a lot of stories are. And it's always fun when you can have a combination of the both. Having the ability to understand magic this well also gives opportunity for some really interesting consequences. It could be as extreme as low-key killing your brother and having to transfer his soul to a suit of armor because you used magic that you didn't understand the boundaries of and there were major consequences for going outside of your abilities, which by the way, Full Metal Alchemist is really high on my list of manga that I'm gonna read soon. Or it could be as simple as just getting really really, really exhausted when you're pushing your abilities too far, which is one of the ways magic affects you in Wheel of Time. There are also some really big consequences for using magic when you shouldn't in Wheel of Time. There's a lot, there's a lot of complexities going on with that magic system as well. 
I really like the magic system in Wheel of Time. There's one thing that, that's really stuck with me over the years. It was in this book, Foundry Side, which I read, I don't know, two years ago maybe? And yet the magic in this book is very simple to understand, yet it has a lot of boundaries and consequences to it. And it has stuck with me because of some of the scenes uh, that made it feel more real to me. Let me explain. So our main character has this ability where she can't, where if she touches something, then she can get all of the information on it. She can learn, if she touches an object, she can learn the history of it, who's owned it previously, and its entire story. If she touches the floor, she can get an entire floor plan of that building, which makes her a super good thief, which is what she is. Which is a really interesting concept, and I love how animate that makes objects, which is kind of a joke because there is an animate object, there's an animate key. There's a, there's a key with a personality and a life in the book. But anyway, I love how much that makes objects, it, how connected it makes her to objects. I love how that gives her an ability and an edge on certain situations that is really, really helpful and useful. But there's a downside to it that felt so simple yet painful to me. And that's the fact that she has to wear gloves constantly. And we are constantly reminded of day-to-day -day tasks that are painful to her because of this sensory issue she has. There was one scene of her taking a shower and her having to wash her hair and wash her body and how just the t the tiniest touch was so overwhelming that she had to be extremely cautious on these day-to-day -day chores that you and I don't think about. One disadvantage to a hard magic system is that books are definitely susceptible to info dumps. I think that most people, when they talk about hard magic systems, they talk about Brandon Sanderson. He's not there, he's there. Brandon Sanderson. And I, it would be hard to argue that he doesn't info dump. It doesn't bother me tremendously. Um, info dumps aren't the worst insult in the world, especially if it's a really interesting magic system that I want the information on, but it's there. And it, it does mess with pacing. It does mess with, uh, I, sometimes the reader doesn't want to read an essay. Sometimes the reader doesn't want all of that information delivered to them in, in such a, uh, streamlined way. And it's not like info dumps can't ever be avoided with hard magic systems, but it's just, it's just, it, it, it's almost always there. And uh, there are ways, there are places to put it where it's not as big of a deal, where it, it works a little bit better, but that is a skill all in of itself. Person B says hard magic systems are really great when they're at the forefront of the plot used to drive the story. Soft magic systems are fun when they're in the background, a mythical, mysterious force that makes the world building better. Perfectly put. Let's talk about soft magic systems. Soft magic systems don't have those hard guidelines, boundaries, rules, consequences. Soft magic systems are a lot more wibbly wobbly and timey wimey. They, we, readers don't get a grasp on the mechanics of the magic. It feels more fairy tale esque more mysterious, more what could happen next. Sephandrus McStory, totally nailed that pronunciation, says, I generally prefer soft magic systems in character driven stories as they are often a part of our character. Soft magic systems leave a lot of room for the magic to be able to be an inherent piece of who the character is as, a as opposed to a tool that the character is using. It depends on that character looking inward. And this is one way that Avatar also is uses its magic a lot is you have to really look inside of yourself and you have to pull from deep within in order to be able to use parts of branches of the magic. But that also gives the opportunity for the themes to be explored right alongside the magic. When the magic gets to encompass the themes of the story, when the one ring captures you and holds you and becomes a part of you in a way very similar to 
PTSD. Suddenly, the exploration of this mysterious, strange, odd magic is actually really powerful. And every time we learn how this magic is affecting Frodo, every time we learn how the ring is affecting Frodo and how he's responding to it and how he feels kind of lost when it's gone, even though it was a curse on him, suddenly the story feels so much heavier and, and, and feels like it has so much more weight and meaning to it. The ability to explore character depth and explore themes through how the magic is moving in the story is an element that is so unique to soft magic that, that oh gosh, it hits me. It hits me every time. When done well, soft magic can add just as many stakes as hard magic can, just in a completely different way. Soft magic systems can go wrong just because in their nature, they're unpredictable. And it doesn't matter how well the wielder understands magic, magic is a bigger and greater force than they are. It adds a level of unpredictability to magic that in and of itself can add so much suspense and even fear for the reader when magic is being used and it's just bigger than we are, so anything could happen. When speaking about soft magic systems, tons of people cite that soft magic systems are fun because of the sense of awe and wonder that it gives them. And I completely agree. I feel like soft magic systems make me just feel like the world and the magic is bigger, bigger than me, bigger than the characters, bigger than this task that we have. A lot of times with hard magic system stories, it can feel like the world is kind of centered around our characters. Whereas with soft, it feels like we're just a blip on this earth earth, but we are not the biggest, baddest, strongest in this world, and we won't be by the end of the series either. JP says, I've always found soft magic systems to be amazing. They invoke a sense of wonder and awe in a way that hard magic systems can't. However, when it comes to preference, I love a mix of both. I think of the devil fruit system in One Piece, the classification of fruits, consequences for eating one, and limitations to abilities associated with the fruit. The soft part comes from the unique way each individual uses the fruit. One Piece is an excellent example of one of those kind of mixed systems, though it definitely leans towards soft. We have hard and fast rules. We have consequences if you eat too many devil fruits or if you eat even just one, you can't swim anymore, which is unfortunate, especially for a crew who like to be pirates. There are clear defined rules and boundaries and consequences, but anything can happen in this series. I mean, it is intentionally an absurd story and Oda leans into the absurdity of it a lot and it's hilarious, but there's also always a new way to use any kind of fruit that fits within the boundaries of the world, but also there's no predictability to this story at all. But much like when I was talking about Hunter x Hunter, that's a huge draw in the story, the unpredictability. One user would use this fruit in a completely different way than another would, and their own ability to understand the fruit mixed with their personality determines what's going to happen next because devil fruits can be used in a variety of different ways. And if that character has a certain bend in a direction of good or evil, or just has a certain intention to them, they will find a completely uniquely creative way to use it, which makes each individual character that we encounter so interesting because you never know. You hear something like a string string fruit, they can produce strings and it's like, not interesting yet. <laughs> it can be used in the most unique and fascinating ways, like attaching string to clouds and being able to fly or knit yourself back together when you have a wound that would otherwise kill you or have a string so sharp that you could decapitate someone. It's fascinating. Soft magic systems can carry awe and wonder. They can carry their own sense of dread and suspense of not knowing it, literally anything could happen but it also gives the reader the opportunity to just let go, or at least it does for me. My experience with soft magic system is that I feel like I can just let go when I know what kind of story I'm in. When I realize that this is a, a completely soft magic system and anything could happen, I feel like I've been given permission to just let the story happen, just enjoy it. I don't have to keep track of everything. Uh, 
it has to still operate within the boundaries of the story, within the boundaries of the rules that have been established because even soft magic systems have some boundaries and rules given to them. As long as it's not, as long as it's done well, I feel like I have permission to just get lost in the story, to just let go and let the story happen to me, which is a uniquely awesome experience. I love hard magic systems. I love knowing all the rules and boundaries and trying to sort through problems with my characters, but I also really love not doing that. I really love when it's done well, just sitting back and saying, what's gonna happen next? I don't know, and whatever it is, I hope it's cool. It's a completely unique reading experience to have that kind of permission to just let go and almost be transported into the world with the character and feel just as disoriented and overwhelmed and small and in awe of what's around you as they are. This feeling of anything could happen is a really appealing feeling for a lot of people. There's a reason Studio Ghibli films are so popular. This unsettling, uneasy feel that they give us mixed with an uncertainty of what's around any corner is so unique to them. Their ability to, to have this unexplainable world, yet an engaging story is exactly what makes soft magic so cool. To me, soft magic feels like exactly what magic would feel like if it were real. Hard magic system is fun to imagine yourself in the scenarios, fun to imagine how if in your real everyday life you had magic, how you would use it. But soft magic, I think, if magic were real in our world, I think it would look more soft. It feels like the magic is bigger than we are. It feels untamable, uncontrollable. It feels like it's this great something that we get to participate in, but that we can never control. It makes the world feel bigger than us. And to me, when I'm reading a really well done soft ma magic system, it feels like when I run out of pages, the story keeps going without me. One book that really blew me away in capturing that feeling of this is bigger than me and, and, and if magic were real, this is what it would be like, this unpredictability, this, this, this inability to understand uh, was Piranesi. I came out of that book feeling like if magic were real, this would be what it would be like. This unpredictability, this untamability, this incomparable source that's bigger than I am, and this story that goes on without me when I'm done here, that's what magic would feel like. And it's just a uniquely cool thing. Thomas said, I like soft magic systems just because I feel like that's what magic would feel like in real life. The mysteries and the unknown really make it feel like humans tapping into something beyond them, as opposed to some rules made up by an author. So bringing it back to talking about the two together, I think that hard versus soft magic systems is probably a term that gets too much weight to it. Like I touched on before with Avatar, I, I think that a lot of magic systems really don't fall cleanly into hard or soft. Uh, it's really a spectrum and most magic systems drop somewhere in the middle, maybe leaning one way or another. Plus, a lot of stories have a combination of the two. There's a hard magic system in the story and a soft magic system in the story. The Name of the Wind is a great example of this. There's sympathy, which is very scientific and, and has rules and we can understand it very well. And then there's naming, which is completely mysterious and we have no idea how the mechanics of it work. A lot of stories have multiple magic systems in them and some of them fall in hard and soft and some of them fall somewhere in the middle and use a little bit of both. I think a lot of times the conversation is hard is better or soft is better or argue over if a magic system is hard or soft and cite all the reasons why. And the reality is that this is a nice term to use for some quick discussion, for some quick uh, labels, but in reality, magic is a lot more complex than that. Or at least magic and stories. I know it's not real. So while I don't think that this hard and soft magic system probably should have as much weight to it, it is a good for, for quick, quick, categorizing certain things. And there are magic systems that fall pretty cleanly one way or, or, or the other. Sanderson falls pretty cleanly into hard magic systems. He usually has some soft elements going on, but then he also usually expands on those more and more until they become hard too. So Sanderson is a hard magic system guy. Um, you know, fairy tales, they're always going to be more in the wibbly wobbly timey wimey side of things. So which one is better? That's a stupid question, ask a different question. Which one do I like better? Um, I, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. It depends on what kind of story I wanna read that day because 
these two wield such different stories. Um, hard magic systems usually have these complex plots that are more plot driven, uh, where the magic is an integral part of the story. And soft magic system usually wields more character driven, themes driven stories that give me more room to just breathe as a reader and sit back and enjoy the ride. So am I in the mood to enter a story and solve problems and figure it out and be wowed by complex plot maneuvering? Or am I in the mood for a mysterious and exciting world that I'll probably never be able to understand? It just depends. I Both are awesome. But it is fun to discuss the differences between the two and the fact that a lot of magic systems really just fall somewhere in between. Really, it all boils down to, is it written well? Then it's probably an awesome story. Like I said before, there is a community post where people gave a lot of their own thoughts and probably did it a lot more concisely than me about hard magic systems and soft magic systems and the spectrum that they're on. So please do continue this discussion in the comment section. Check out my Patreon if you feel like it. We watch movies there. We do buddy reads there. We hang out and chat about whatever there. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel. Thursdays on the second channel, which is linked in the description. I'll see you again soon. Bye.